What's up, guys? Uh, we're back and tackling the gremlins. Gremlins, gremlins, gremlins. I got three things, I think, on my list. Still got the vibration thing going on. I'm not quite sure what the deal is with it. Frustrating, frustrating, frustrating. Um, I did put an aluminum drive shaft in, as you guys saw last video. Um, night and day difference on acceleration shifting gears did tune down a little bit of some i guess instability feel uh, on the car um, but i'm pleased with the upgrade of that and but i still think we haven't found the root cause of some of the the shaky shakies so um i get on the freeway and i get a little bit of jostle from the dash um, around 70 ish so something else is still a mess um, the other thing is, is hard braking, the rear calipers, which I took off to diagnose some of the issues uh, with the car, putting them all back together, putting them on, had to adjust them, got those dialed in. Now I seem to have kind of this grabby, as you saw in some of my uh, previous video. And uh, so I'm gonna replace the calipers. I've been chatting with some guys on the third gen board and uh gonna start ruling that out so that's good um and then the other thing i got was a transmission mount we'll just knock that out make sure that that's not the case and we'll put that on really quick uh which is about a seven dollar part so that's not a biggie at all that's that's cheap money and old old piece of rubber that gets a lot of tension and torque especially with the torque arm being you know thrusting on that all the time so we'll get that done and then the third thing that I've got is, I think in the back left, I can hear the upper shock mount um, jostling around. Um, and so I had an 83 Camaro back in the day and I had some KYB guest just shocks on it and it literally ripped the, the body mount. Um, had to have it welded, fixed up, all that stuff. So I'm suspecting the same. Um, but I'm going to have to take off all the panels and try to get that figured out. So we went to o -O 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 O'Reilly and uh, I did get some parts. Got the transmission mount, um, which is, uh, like I mentioned, about seven bucks. And uh, that's pretty straightforward. So look at that. That's a pretty easy part. I've replaced this before on a IROC convertible I had. That's easy to do. Um, and then I got the calipers. However, as you can see, they're kind of a different shade. And then I looked and I looked to seem to have different components on them. Probably not a big deal, but this one actually looks, I don't know, newer or cleaner. I don't know if that's a finish or not, but just for the sake of, I guess, consistency, I ordered another one just to try to match up and have a like pair, as it looks like they were remanufactured by a couple of different companies. So, um, so yeah, we'll uh, sort that out, put that on pause until I get the other one that comes in today. Got some brake fluid too. And the other thing is I got a couple of uh, struts from a guy uh, on the board uh, who was selling them for a meager hundred bucks, which I thought was a, a, a fair price. Uh, I'm going to have them rebuilt um, by Bilstein. And uh, I already got been talking with uh, the folks there, so she's going to get them all cleaned up and resealed, revalved, all that kind of stuff, so that they're uh, ready to go. As I'm going to swap out those KYBs on the front as they're not really to my liking. Um, so, yeah. That together, I've got those H&R Sport Springs that I was talking about. So we'll push that off for some future videos of how we're gonna basically dial this thing in so that's really tight and uh, just like a race car. So um, yeah, so stay tuned. We're gonna dig into these projects and uh, knock out these uh, gremlins. Okay, so we started pulling apart the shock. And so when you normally have to get at that rear shock it's right through just the back seat here and as I suspected 
I pulled this piece of foam off and the nut and washer were just hanging there. So the shock has been able to uh, completely undo. And if you look in here, this rubber collar is kind of uh, supposed to be a little bit higher for the, the two to kind of sit. I'm gonna try putting it back together, squish it down. Hopefully that takes care of it with the compression and um, solves the problem. But typically what can happen to these things is this metal, there's a bond in the inside. It's a plate underneath that. And um, if this starts to rub, it'll basically tear that away. So I'm gonna monitor it, listen for it, but at least I solved that problem. So that's good and making progress there. And uh, we'll put that back together and start working on the transmission mount. So at least that's one victory out of the way. Okay, put the car up on jack stands. We're gonna jump underneath now and uh, I'll just take a quick assessment of the uh, trans mount, which is right there. doesn't look bad at all so the only thing they were doing here is just uh, replacing out an old part um, that may be tired the other thing I kind of noticed with um, the uh, exhaust mounts as well too is they're rubber they're getting cracked and old so rubber is rubber and uh, it gets old and cracked just like anything else and it starts to lose its elasticity and so this is the other thing in here as well too is the torque arm mount so a lot of pressure going on the tail of the transmission here you got the torque arm mount you've got the exhaust mount and it all rides pressure wise on this mount as well so you've got lateral forces coming from the torque arm plus you've got forces coming from the motor with the exhaust so this thing's getting gets a lot of of uh, i guess varying resistances or pressures um same thing that i think in the the later models they stopped aligning the exhaust mount to the trans and they actually mounted it someplace else probably for some of those very reasons um, so anyways let's start taking this thing apart and we'll get a jack underneath this to support it and uh, go from there okay so we got calipers on and getting ready to bleed those out um, both sides pretty easy work uh, they both seem like they adjusted out fine so I put some silicone grease or synthetic grease on those as well too and uh, so we'll bleed those out <laughs> so we got the car back on the ground in the middle of an earthquake uh, 3.6 to be exact, uh, out of Redondo Beach, so I was like jacking the car down and I heard the garage door, you know, shimmer or whatever and I was like, what, it's just me or, and I thought the car, the back end of the car was, uh, gonna slip out and fall down, but, uh, my, uh, my little one came out and said, did you hear that or feel that, Dad? <laughs> so... Yeah, always fun working on cars in California. So, anyways, we got her down, put her back together, and uh, we're gonna take it for a spin. Got that shock bolt bolted down behind the drivers, got both calipers on, got them bled out. Um, that's about all I'm gonna do. I, I, I'm gonna pass on the transmission mount I got underneath there and looked at it, it looks fine. So, um, we'll take that to the next, uh, video and we'll take it from there and see if our vibration things persist. Uh, I was also reading some stuff on the forums too about um, 
uh, torque converters and all kinds of other stuff. So I'm gonna keep doing my research and, and uh, flushing it out and getting these gremlins out of the car. Thanks for watching everybody. Peace.